Hello, my name is Richard. I'm the pastor of the King's Church in Adelston in Surrey, and we are currently going through the Sermon on the Mount. We've returned to that, and I'm going to read you a little bit from Matthew chapter 6 from that sermon. This is Jesus talking. Um, well, I'll let you decide what he's talking about. He says, Do not store up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either they will hate one and love the other, or they will devote, be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. Now, different parts of this sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, um, I'm sure will be challenging to, more challenging to, to different uh, people. Some people will find some sections more difficult to read and to, to take on board than others. Um, and if I'm honest, this section that I've just read has um, always been challenging to me and, and difficult. And so as a result, it's, it's difficult for me to teach it, if I'm honest, because I'm not sure I've really learned it at all myself yet. Nevertheless, let's just um, dive into this. My dad had, um, you know, dads have their quirky ways, don't they? My dad had a, uh, a saying that I remember as a child, if I was to get a new torch uh, or a toy that required batteries or pretty much any kind of electronic, or, uh, electronic um, thing that needed batteries, he would say this, he would say, don't use it, you'll wear the batteries out. Um, <laughs> and so I, would, I felt that I should keep this electronic device for really only special or emergency uh, use only. Um, I felt a little bit guilty when I used it because I knew I was wearing the batteries out and maybe a little bit naughty if I was to enjoy that thing because, again, I'm wearing the batteries out. Don't use it, you'll wear the batteries out, would my, my dad would say. And it became a family joke, um, and I think he knew that. Um, um, but there is a certain wisdom to that phrase, don't use it, the batteries will wear out. Um, because stuff wears out, doesn't it? Um, clothes fade in the wash, shoes get holes in them. Um, the washing machine that you just wash the clothes in, that breaks down eventually. Um, cars get dents in them and need oil changes really regularly. Computers slow down, I don't know if you've noticed. Um, carpets fray, soap eventually disappears. You use it. So don't use it, the batteries will wear out. Actually, there's a sense in that that, that there's something true about that. Um, it's fair to say that material goods decrease with usage. It's the way of our world. Um, things decay. Um, they either need to be replaced or they need to be renewed at some point because things just don't last forever if we use them. However, whilst it's fair to say that material things, uh, they wear out with use, spiritual things, well, I think it's fair to say they actually increase with usage. Prayer and fasting, worship, study the scriptures, loving others, serving, encouraging, blessing. These things don't wear out the more we do them. In fact, they probably increase as we use them. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say, I've prayed too much and studied the scriptures too much and I think I've worn God out. Rather, I think I'm getting to know God a little bit more. Um, no one ever found that encouraging and blessing people was something that wore thin. Rather, actually, this is a good thing. This is something that I can see an increase in. And so we come to what Jesus says. He says, don't store up your treasure on earth where moths and vermin destroy and thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasure in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not steal. So Jesus offers an alternative to the world's never-ending striving and seeking of gaining stuff, actually stuff that wears out and stuff that disappears. And he's not talking about building up 
an eternal pension fund as an alternative, you know, go for the spiritual things. But he's actually talking about living a rich life here and now, seeking the kingdom of heaven here and now, and not seeking and running after things that are continually wearing out. So Jesus asked this question, where is your heart? Where is your focus? Where are your eyes drawn? If your focus and attention is on decaying treasure here on earth, then your life will be dark. Your eyes are unhealthy if that's where you're looking. Um, your, the attention uh, of where you're looking will cause your body to be unhealthy, Jesus says. But if the focus and the attention of your heart is first on God and his kingdom, then your eyes are healthy and your body will even be healthy. And so here we find in this part of the Sermon on the Mount, one of Jesus' famous quotes, you cannot serve both God and money. Some translations, rather than use the word money, they use the word mammon instead of uh, using money. Um, and mammon sort of has more than, it's more than money. It's more, it's more like a personification of riches, like something that's like a corrupting spiritual force. So trusting in riches for salvation is like trusting in a false god, Jesus is saying. To serve money or to serve mammon is effectively a form of idolatry. So Jesus calls us to turn from this false god of riches and wealth and mammon and look toward our heavenly father instead. To serve God rather than to serve mammon. Jesus calls us to a life where money and riches do not rule us and rather where God does. A life of freedom where we serve God and money then serves us. And I think that's an important thing to grasp that and actually our wealth and all that we have really should serve us rather than the other way around, us serving it and us striving after it when whatever we have is there to, to benefit us and those around us. You see, within this, I think it's also important to clarify that I don't think Jesus is calling us to live lives of poverty per se, but actually to live lives of service to God, putting him first, um, rather than trying to strive for what we can continually gain. And then what wealth and riches we do have and we acquire, those things, as I said, should serve us and serve the kingdom of God around us. And so that challenges those of us who seek wealth and trust in riches for, for salvation. Um, Jesus says, don't be enslaved to those things. They will always wear out. Could also challenge kind of miserly mentality that I think can exist with some Christians where we mix this idea of not serving riches for actually not spending money um, and actually people can be equally enslaved by riches through not spending money. There's a thought. So if you study the teaching of Jesus and the impact on his followers you will see that there is a call to live simply and a call to live generously. Sharing with what sharing what the Lord has blessed us with, with others, and finding a freedom from living to serve money. Jesus says there can be only one master. It's either money or God. You can't have those two um, vying for in, in, in competition. It's either one or the other. So Jesus presents us with one of two options, God or money, true God or false idol, treasure on earth or treasure in heaven, decay or eternal. There was a church father, I'm not quite sure who said this, but um, he said this, and this is really the, the good news of Jesus. A man should not be a servant of his riches, but a master of what he possesses. So may your whole body be full of light as you choose this way of life in Christ, putting God first and allowing the blessings that he has put on us, the riches that he has given us to serve us rather than us to be enslaved by them and trying to serve them. Grace and peace to you in Christ. Amen. If you found this message helpful, you know what to do. Give it a like, put a comment in the comments below. Always love hearing from people. Until next time, God bless.